Have you ever experienced that suddenly in the neighborhood things went south? Things going south an expression to say that things became worse and worse. For example, let's say you live in a neighborhood where everyone got along perfectly fine. And suddenly, after one summer, nobody talks to one another anymore. Suddenly, there's this very angry vibration in, in the atmosphere. And you think, what happened over here? That all those people turned on one another and nobody wants to get along anymore. In the past, we used to visit one another regularly. In the past, you didn't even have to put locks on your door. Now, everyone's putting extra locks on their door because they suspect their neighbors from doing something to them. So, people that visited the neighborhood before and afterwards realized a very big difference. Now, what happened here? I'm telling you what happened. Retaliation backfired. And that's why all those who are in on the retaliation, they all are now charged with the anxiety of that same thing that they meditated on their victim coming back to haunt them. So let me say it again, because that was a long sentence. When the retaliation backfires, all the conspirators, all the perpetrators and enablers, everyone who was in on the retaliation, everyone who was in on the violence, when retaliation backfires, all of them will receive the charges they sent out to the victim. And spiritually, this will work out in the material, so it will affect their physical bodies, it will affect their physical circumstances. So when retaliation backfires, the charges begin to haunt those that sent them. That's how it goes. Now, as I mentioned before, fallen mankind is a self-sabotaging species. Fallen mankind does not want to move forward. Fallen mankind does not tolerate one of their own to move forward. Fallen mankind is obsessed with control and revenge. Fallen mankind clings onto restrictions, often restrictions that don't benefit them. Fallen mankind clings so much onto restrictions that they think it's a, their duty. They think it's something, uh, they think it's their holy mission to preserve toxic restrictions. That is fallen mankind. And if you open your mouth and question those restrictions they invest in, they turn on you. And that's what it comes down to. Fallen mankind self sabotages and they want to get away with it without being addressed. Anytime you refuse the sabotage of society or anytime you question the toxic restrictions of the group, they turn on you. They quote unquote put you in your place. Which means is, they violate you. They make life hard on you, just so that you remember that they can harm you. It's the threat of violence or the threat of mental or physical harm. That is the only thing they have to blackmail you into agreeing with their toxic restrictions. When you were a little child, they could easily do this, but they had to watch out because if they fight battles against a child, it's going to make them look ridiculous. So because you were a child, they had to somehow restrain themselves. But once you're an adult, or once you're in your late teens, they feel more comfortable actually taking you out. That means taking your life. But because you have courthouses and prisons, people don't just go out there and lynch you. Instead, they'll try to set you up. Maybe you have a buddy who comes to your house just to hang out, and he puts drugs in your house, and later he gives an anonymous tip. Police comes, find drugs, and now you go to jail for about 10 years. For, to prison, I mean. You were set up. How are you going to prove you were set up? It's very difficult. And even if you prove that you've been set up, they have to reverse the uh, conv conviction of the court, and that may take a while, so it may take at least a few years before you're out. And when you're out, you still have the stigma that you went to prison. That's going to haunt you. So they successfully sabotage you because you questioned their expectations or you, you refuse to allow them to sabotage you. That's how it goes out there. Or maybe there are a few people that 
are upset with your high income. So they set up a date for you. And when you're on the date with a beautiful woman, they go to your house and rob your place. Or it can be that you have this ex of yours who is upset that you moved on. She dumped you. You moved on. Now you're far better off without her. And now she wants to ruin your life by making false rape accusations. And the community is aware she's lying, but the community now has an outlet for their own frustrations also. So the community tolerates her nonsense at your expense. And when you call out the community on it, now they become your enemy because you dare to question them. Such things happen. The world is obsessed with revenge. Anytime you don't tolerate the sabotage of society or anytime you question the toxic restrictions, you will face harm. They will make life hard on you. Some people even tell you that if you don't do what they want, you'll be in trouble. Some people even tell you to your face what they want to do to you if you don't make them happy. That's how ridiculous fallen mankind is. Fallen mankind as a collective feels entitled to harm their own. And if you question this, oh dear, they can't handle this. Listen to what I'm saying here. Fallen mankind is sexually diseased and mentally unstable. That's fallen mankind. So anytime fallen mankind is challenged, they don't know how to deal with it. So most of the time they respond with violence or they act out in revenge. That's how fallen mankind is. Now, not all people of fallen mankind are reprobates. They're not all narcissists. You also have decent people amongst fallen mankind, but they're still fallen. And because they're fallen, they don't see through the violence very quickly. Look, anytime retaliation backfires, things will go bad and from bad to worse in a community. Okay, let me give an example. Let's say now this happens. Let's say that um, you had an ex-girlfriend. She broke up with you because you wanted to sleep around with other dudes and you moved on and now you're happily married. You have your own business. Things are going well. And now she ends up uh, coming with false rape accusations. Now, the police doesn't believe her and tells her to go away. But the prosecutor decides to prosecute the case. You know why? Because this woman lost her mind and she began to scream around, drive around drunk, and escalate in public. And a lot of people were upset and harmed by it. So, now all those people in public who feel embarrassed by this woman going crazy in public, they all hear about her being sexually violated and nobody helping her. So now the community is upset. And because the community is upset, the community doesn't care what goes on, they're now ang angry. And his anger becomes a weight on them and his anger needs to go somewhere because this anger lingers around and before you know it you will have an increase in domestic violence they will take out his anger on their children or on the spouses or on random strangers so there's a real danger now in the community the negative tension needs to be just discharged somewhere so the prosecutor at the courthouse realized okay there's anger in the community this anger needs to be discharged so the prosecutor decides to prosecute you, even though the statement of that woman doesn't add up. Here's what goes on. The community is upset and they don't care who is guilty or innocent. They just want to discharge themselves. So the prosecutor decides to look for a discharge by prosecuting you. Let's say now that you either move out of the country or you find a way to... Uh, avoid the courthouse altogether. Let's say now you bring out receipts showing that you are innocent. What happens now? The public's gonna feel humiliated because they all thought finally they caught the guy. Now things go back to normal again. But now you've proven your, your innocence, that you're innocent. So now those people who thought finally the case came, came to a close, now they're, they're upset again. Now they feel humiliated because they feel disappointed because they thought it's finally over, but it's not. Now a whole fight begins between you and the courthouse. And 
look what's going to happen. They're going to blame you, even though you are the victim both of that crazy ex of yours and of the courthouse. Because both set you up. So what's going to happen? The community will turn on you. You will have stalkers stalking you, where online or in real life, just to blame you. They don't look at the fact that there was a mentally disturbed woman amongst them who was making false rape accusations. They don't deal with that. The only thing they care about is being left alone, being relieved. And now the public was disturbed and bothered by this crazy woman. And to deal with this crazy woman means that they need to admit that there are creepy women around them. And that's something a lot of people don't want to process. So the easiest way out for them is to blame the victim, in this case you. But because you fought back, the retaliation failed. And because the retaliation failed, now there's extra anger and extra bitterness. And now you'll hear more about domestic violence. You'll hear more about arson. You hear more about sexual abuse going on. Now, uh, now things are escalating in the community because the retaliation failed. Now, why am I explaining this to you? Understand this. When the retaliation fails, it backfires. So if you overcame retaliation of the world, somewhere it got worse. Maybe after you went through that trial and tribulation, let's say you face a lot of psychic violence. You go into prayer, you go into fasting, and after a while the psychic violence stopped. It can be that you later find out that some of your peers that you went to school with are in prison now for domestic violence or for going off at someone. It can be that you hear that suddenly um, this primary school you went to catch fire and it burns down. Or it can be that suddenly around you people lose their minds and begin to drive cars into buildings or drive buses out of uh, bridges. And all kinds of weird stuff are happening. What's going on? The community was not able to discharge the energetic pollution. And because of that energetic pollution harms them. Now, instead of serving Christ, so that the power of the Holy Spirit will burn away the pollution, they walk in righteousness. Instead of that, they look for an outlet. They have no interest in solutions, they just want relief. So they want and they demand victims to dump their pollution upon. And listen to what I'm saying here. Once the public decided that you are the victim, they will never go back on it. Once the court of public opinion convicted you to death, they will work very hard, even at their own expense, to kill you. That is how it goes. Because people in general don't want to admit they were wrong. They don't want to admit fault on their own part, especially if the fault on their part caused a lot of harm. People just want to escape, and if they can't escape, they want to escalate. They don't want to participate in solutions. So when the public convicted you, when the public declared you were, that you were guilty, to them you are guilty. To them it's a fact. To them it's true that you're guilty, even if reality shows you're innocent. So that is why narcissists tend to conduct smear campaigns. Because when someone talks trash about you all the time, the people that hear it are filled with that trash. And that trash is um, associated with you. So anytime they hear about you, the trash that, that was sown in them is triggered. So some of those people may treat you in a bad way, not because they actually have something against you, because that was put inside of them. Well, when this happens, they need to admit, you know what? We heard a lot of dumb stuff about you, and we even treat you in a bad way. You know what? That's on us. We shouldn't have listened to all those smear campaigns about you. We shouldn't have just allowed this gospel to, to run around. We should have examined it, and we should have reflected on ourselves. If people do that, that, that is fine. But a lot of people don't. So if you are the victim of a smear campaign, and they are filled with the rumors about you, they are likely to get along with the rumors than to admit that there's evil amongst them and that they need to be alert. That's how a lot of folks are. And that's the only weapon narcissists really have, your reputation. 
apart from your reputation, there isn't much they can do. Because a financial grip is something you can escape. If a narcissist or a predator wants to uh, drain you financially, it is to limit your options. But you can bypass that and leave anyway. But if you leave anyway, but nobody wants anything to do with you, then it's the same as being shut down completely. Because look, if you have some money, you can escape from a bad situation by moving away. But if you want to move away, but everyone thinks bad about you, then you will encounter harm everywhere you go. So that's why smear campaigns are so powerful. And that's why worldlings are terrified of being disliked. Look, even worldlings will tell you they don't care what you think about them. They're lying. Worldlings that tell you they don't care what other people think about them, they are lying. Because all worldlings, including pagans with a paranormal charm, they're under the threat of violence of society. None of them have long-term protection against violence. None of them do. So all of them are affected directly by how people think about them. Just one wrong thought that's spoken about them can destroy their whole lives. Especially if they have their own business, especially if they're, they have a spouse, especially if they have children, especially if they have things going well for them. One wrong thought of someone being spoken out loud can destroy everything. So worldlings, including pagans with paranormal charms, they are all terrified of people thinking bad of them. They're playing tough when they tell you, I don't care what other people think about me. They do. They do. Because it's real. When people think bad about you, bad things tend to happen to you. So, anytime retaliation fails, the community is going to experience it. So listen, if you live somewhere and things go downwards, that means that likely there was some type of retaliation going on against the victim and the victim escaped or the victim uh, uh, overcame it and now it backfires on the senders. It always happens. That's why pagan Christianity tells you to be a polite victim. Because when you overcome retaliation of the world, it will explode somewhere in the community. And nobody wants to deal with that. So when you are the target of retaliation and you fight back, people tend to be upset with you for fighting back. Why? Because people know when there is negative tension, when there is pollution in the community, the pollution needs to be discharged somewhere. Because if the pollution is discharged on you, that means the rest is safe from it. But if, if you fight back, the pollution will increase and one of them may be hit by it. So a lot of people will be upset with you for fighting back when you're being victimized. Why? Because by you fighting back, the risk that they may feel the harm increases. So people expect you to be a polite victim so they are at ease. That is what society praises. So that's why Christ told us not to cast our pearls before swine. Because often when you fight back, which is the right thing to do, people will not appreciate you. Sometimes strangers will turn on you for fighting back. That's why there are times you just leave. You just shake the dust off your feet and you leave a situation. Because there is no solution possible there with those people. You can't come to a resolution with people who are determined to lose. If they are determined to lose, you can't win with them. Now you understand why the victim is always blamed as a rule in the world. Because people don't want to deal with the fact that evil exists. Or if they do admit it, they don't want to actually look for a solution. Because that means that they need to face themselves to see where they enable evil. And that means giving up, they're clinging on to control. So it's too painful and too confronting to face reality. So people just want to blame the victim and be left alone. Either they want the victim to die as soon as possible or to be put in prison for a long time or they want, or they hope that the victim commits suicide. So either they want the victim to be out of sight as soon as possible or they want uh, the victim to take the blame. It's the fighting back that really angers the masses. Anytime anyone fights back 
when they are the target, society turns on them. I'm telling you, when retaliation backfires, people know it's going to go wrong. So ask yourself the following. If a community is always at ease, if a neighborhood is always at ease, where is the pollution discharged? If it's a neighborhood with only believers walking by faith, then there is no pollution. But as long as you're dealing with world links, there is pollution generated. Where is the pollution discharged? And often you will figure out that in such com uh, communities or in such neighborhoods, there's a, there are a lot of people dying of cancer. Or there's a lot of people dying of, of um, bad accidents. So where is the violence discharged? Where is the pollution discharged? Where is it discharged? That's what you need to ask yourself. Listen, you will face retaliation as a believer. Even unbelievers who want to move forward face retaliation. A lot of unbelievers die by being murdered when they want to move forward. Look at those cold cases. When you look at those cold cases, most of them have a victim who wanted to move forward. And for some reason, the community couldn't take it and one of the individuals of the community decided to take action against it. That is reality. And I'm telling you, who's listening to this, there are people around you right now who would turn into Freddy Krueger or Jason the moment they see you moving forward. And I don't intend to be funny, I'm serious here. You think that fictional characters like Jason or Freddy Krueger or the Joker, that don't, that's how psychopaths and dangerous people are. Now let me tell you, some of the people in your daily life right now, if you would seriously decide to move forward, they would turn on you and some of them will even make plots to set you up, whether it's setting you up to go to jail or setting you up uh, for an accident, for you to die or to become crippled. Some of the same people that are laughing with you, partying with you, making jokes with you. Some of those same people who are supporting you financially here and there, some of those same people are the first who will sell you out and endanger you just because they cannot stand that they can't control you anymore. This is reality, sakes. This YouTube channel does not talk about... Um, not like this. On this YouTube channel, I don't sugarcoat reality. I can sugarcoat things, but when it comes to danger and things that affect human health and human life, I do not sugarcoat it. Christ even said, one's enemies will be from one's own household. He was not joking there. He was not exaggerating. He's not saying that every household only consists out of enemies. So it can be that people in your household are good with you and want the best for you, but that's an exemption. The rule in the world is, I'm not talking about the exemptions. The rule in the world is that dangerous people will emerge from your own household. Okay? For example, when you look at, I use for example the civil rights movement of black folks in the United States. Many of those prominent figures, I'm not, I'm not talking about just Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and those big names. Many of those high profile figures in the civil rights movement, they were shut down. And when you look at the history, who sabotaged them, it was another black individual who wanted white acceptance of white supreme society. Forget about black folks. Let's look at um let's look at the at Asians. The Child trafficking, as well as child, lab uh, child slavery, is something that still happens in Asia, covertly. But who are the ones that keep this going? Corrupt police officers and corrupt politicians in Asia. So it's not the so-called white men from Europe that comes and does the dirt. It's not black criminals that come around to do it. It's their own that sabotages them. Listen. If you ever will face a conspiracy against your life, 99% of the time, the plot will be executed by someone in your inner circle. 
Am I saying that you need to distrust everyone? No, that's unhealthy. Just realize that if someone is not walking by faith and their the focus of their lives is not Christ, if that's not the case, then the chance of them being tricked into subtouching you is always there. So anytime you succeed in life, there is some type of escalation, some type of ruin unfolding in the world. That's why a lot of people are not happy when things go well with you. Because instinctively they know when things go well with you, that has pissed a lot of people off. And that pissing off those people, that pollution needs to be discharged somewhere. So that means that somewhere there's going to be a discharge of violence somewhere. Because things are going well with you. Really, I mean it. A lot of folks are not happy when things go well with you. They only fake it. That's the only thing they do. So, stop expecting everyone to applaud you. Stop expecting everyone to be happy with you. First of all, not everyone's going to be happy with you because you have bitter losers who just want, want to lose. So, you shouldn't even be bothered by the disapproval of those bitter people. Okay? So, but I know that you're not expecting everyone to be happy with you. But too many of us, we expect our inner circle, our people from our household to cheer for us. Stop expecting that. If people around you cheer you on, that's good. Be happy with it. If they don't, it shouldn't bother you. Yes, it's painful, it hurts, but you will, it's not easy, but you'll process it and you'll move on. Stop seeking praise from people who are determined to misunderstand you. When people are determined to misunderstand you, they are determined to misunderstand you. Nothing you can do can change their mind. They've made up their mind to see you as the bad guy or the bad girl because there's something about them they don't want to face. So they're projecting their, um, how do I say, they're projecting their darkness on you. That's what they're doing. Listen, saints. Retaliation will backfire when you walk by faith. And because of that, a lot of people will be upset with you. So, as I mentioned before in a video I made over four years ago, yes, it's four years ago already, get used to people being upset with you. Get used to people suddenly cutting you off. Get used to people suddenly not wanting anything to do with you. Get used to people suddenly turning on you. Get used to people ignoring you and attacking you. Get used to it. I'm not telling you to approve it. I'm not telling you to uh, embrace it. I'm not telling you to... to tolerate it and to enable it? No. But just get used to that it will happen. Get used to it. Stop being so surprised. Why are you so surprised about that? That is how it will be till Christ returns. So, beware. When the retaliation fails, it backfires. Even if the retaliation was not directed at you, when it backfires around you, things will happen. So, understand that every success you book in this life, there's going to be some type of angry explosion somewhere causing harm. Now, should you feel guilty for being successful and moving forward? No. Just realize that the world wants to sabotage you, and when they can't do it, they will escalate. Some of you will have multitudes of people deciding to kill you deciding to set you up to die. Some of you will have that. Others will have less retaliation, but retaliation will come. Nevertheless, keep on walking by faith and overcome.